I think this is the biggest scientific discovery in my lifetime. And it stands with the great scientific discoveries of all time, discoveries like the, the discovery of the electron, the discovery of atoms. And the reason is that this is genuinely fundamental. I mean, the theory says, and it's been around since the 1960s, by the way, this theory, that the universe is full of Higgs particles. So that means here, that piece of space in front of me now, and indeed inside me, and in every piece of space out to the edge of the universe, is crammed full of these Higgs particles. The Large Hadron Collider the world's most massive and powerful particle collider has been a cornerstone of scientific discovery for over a decade. Hosted by CERN, it has made monumental strides in particle physics, including the discovery of the elusive Higgs boson. However, the quest for deeper understanding of the universe is pushing the boundaries of current technology, necessitating an even larger collider. CERN has unveiled ambitious plans for a successor to the LHC, a new particle accelerator that dramatically exceeds the current collider in size and depth. This new machine, envisioned to be three times larger and twice as deep underground as the LHC, represents a bold leap forward in particle physics research. The primary objective is to delve deeper into the mysteries of the universe, exploring unknown particles and phenomena that the LHC is not equipped to detect. The proposed collider, while still in the planning stages, is estimated to cost around $21 billion. It's a testament to the global commitment to advancing our understanding of fundamental physics. This new machine aims to serve as a Higgs factory, providing unprecedented insights into the Higgs boson and other fundamental particles. The discoveries made by this new collider have the potential to revolutionize our understanding of physics, much like the LHC did with its historic discovery of the Higgs boson. Thousands of scientists at CERN are engaged in a massive hunt for the tiny particles that are part of the atoms forming everything around us. From someone like Professor Mesh Patel, who has dedicated his entire career to this search, it's all about the thrill of discovery. Exploring the unknown is what excites me, he says. When you're venturing into uncharted territory, you can't predict what you'll find. But that uncertainty doesn't diminish the importance of our quest. There's a really big lab hidden deep underneath the mountains where Switzerland and France meet. They have plans to make this lab even bigger. But first, they need to be sure that making it bigger won't harm the nature around it. They care a lot about not hurting the environment. They have to think about how to deal with moving a lot of rock and how to manage water without causing problems. They're taking a really close look at all these things to make sure that they do it right. The part of the lab they want to add won't be ready to use until around 2045. If they get the permission to do it, it's going to be a huge task. They'll have to deal with keeping nature safe, figuring out how to use these new technologies, and solving big science puzzles. The cost is also huge. It could be as much as $17 billion. You might be wondering, why are they going through so much trouble, making big tunnels and spending so much money just to crash tiny things into each other? The reason is, they're really curious and want to learn new things. It's kind of like asking why people paint pictures or make music. People have always wanted to know more about the world we live in and everything beyond it. This big science project is a way to help find answers to some really deep questions. By doing this, they hope to learn more about the tiny pieces that make up everything in the universe. It's like trying to understand a giant puzzle by looking at its smallest pieces. These tiny particles that they're studying might seem small, but they can tell us a lot about how everything works, from the stars in the sky to the ground under our feet. Scientists from all over the world are interested in this project. They think that by breaking these tiny particles apart, they can discover new things that nobody knows yet. It's a bit like explorers in the past who sailed to unknown lands. They didn't know what they would find, but their discoveries changed the way we see the world. Now let's ask ourselves, what are the elements that make up the universe? How did the universe begin? Was there anything before its inception? And where did the rules that govern nature originate? These questions are incredibly challenging, but scientists are tirelessly working to find answers. They're exploring these mysteries with innovative ideas and experiments. By combining mathematical models and real-world observations, they're developing theories that explain the birth of the universe. Time and again, the universe has shown itself to be more mysterious and intricate than we could have initially imagined. Scientists have proposed many theories to explain the universe's origins. The most accepted theory, the Big Bang Theory, suggests that the universe started with a massive explosion about 13.8 billion years ago. 
In its earliest moments, the universe was a hotbed of energy. As it expanded and cooled, some of this energy turned into matter. We used to think that atoms were the smallest units of matter. However, we now understand that atoms are made of smaller particles, known as subatomic particles. Professor Brian Cox, a renowned British physicist, is delving into these deep questions. He explains these particles and their role in the universe's formation. According to current knowledge, the universe is constructed from these particles. They're the most basic building blocks of the universe. Two particular subatomic particles are quite familiar, the up and down quarks. Protons consist of two up quarks and one down quark, while neutrons are made up of two down quarks and one up quark. These particles form the nucleus of an atom, which is essential for creating everything in the universe, including us, the Earth, the stars, and everything we see in the sky. We believe these elements, the up and down quarks and the electron, make up everything. There's also the neutrino, completing this group of four fundamental particles. In the sun's process of converting hydrogen to helium, it produces many neutrinos. In fact, billions of these neutrinos pass through your thumbnail every second from the sun. They don't interact much with regular matter, which is why we don't feel them. But they're crucial for the stars to shine. Thus, it seems that just these four particles are all that's needed to make a universe. Strangely, nature has created two heavier copies of each of these particles. For instance, the muon is like an electron but heavier, and the tau is another heavier version. This is one of physics' big mysteries. Why did nature choose this pattern? It seems we only need four particles to build everything, but nature has given us twelve. When we look back in time, we find that the universe was incredibly simple right after the Big Bang. As time passed, the universe has been expanding and becoming more complex. Complex structures like stars, planets, and galaxies are characteristics of an older, cooler universe. They seem to have crystallized out of the simpler earlier universe. Observations from NASA's Cosmic Background Explorer and the Wilkinson Anisotropy Microwave Probe have shown microwave light from this early period, around 400,000 years after the Big Bang, confirming that our universe indeed had a dramatic beginning. Since the start of the 21st century, our understanding of the universe has dramatically evolved. As of September 2021, over 4,800 planets have been discovered, orbiting stars far away. It's now known that most galaxies, including our own Milky Way, have black holes at their centers. We've been able to map the age, size, and shape of the universe based on radiation left over from the Big Bang. We've also discovered that most of the universe's matter is dark and invisible, and that the universe's expansion is not just ongoing, but accelerating. This acceleration is one of the universe's great mysteries. It was once thought that the universe, following the Big Bang, would slow down due to gravity. However, the opposite is true. The universe is speeding up. This acceleration might mean the universe will keep expanding forever. This phenomenon is attributed to something called dark energy, which remains a mystery. Furthermore, about 25 to 26 percent of the universe is made up of dark matter, another enigmatic component. The universe is primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, with these two elements making up 98 percent of the visible matter. However, life on Earth and the planet itself owe their existence to heavier elements like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, iron, and others. Understanding how the universe evolved from its simple state after the Big Bang to the complex cosmos we see now involves understanding the formation of stars, galaxies, and planets. Observations suggest that the first stars formed from gas clouds around 150 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. Heavier atoms have been continuously produced in stars and spread across the universe through spectacular stellar explosions known as supernovae. New findings from the Hubble Space Telescope indicate that the formation of the first stars and galaxies might have occurred earlier than previously thought. This area remains an exciting field for future research, especially with the James Webb Space Telescope and other advanced instruments. However, there's a limit to our understanding. We can trace the physical state of the universe back to a certain point. But beyond that, the behavior of matter and radiation is unknown. This doesn't necessarily mean the universe began at that point. We simply don't know what occurred before. We want to explore the universe's early structure and conduct experiments to understand it better. 
while we can't build a time machine to observe the universe's first moments, we can recreate those conditions in laboratories. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Geneva, the largest scientific experiment ever, does just this. It accelerates nuclei of hydrogen to near the speed of light, colliding them to replicate conditions present a fraction of a second after the universe began. This incredible machine was built by an organization known as CERN, short for the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It took an impressive 16 years and a staggering $10 billion to complete. The LHC is not a small endeavor by any means. It sits deep underground, about 100 meters below the surface, near the picturesque city of Geneva in Switzerland. The main purpose of this gigantic machine is to crash tiny particles together at speeds that are almost as fast as light itself. This process creates conditions similar to those just moments after the Big Bang, the massive explosion believed to have given birth to the universe. With a massive circumference of roughly 27 kilometers, the LHC holds the title of the most powerful particle accelerator on the planet. It pushes protons or ions, which are types of particles, to speeds that are nearly as fast as light. This is achieved through a network of superconducting magnets and a series of accelerating structures. The name, Large Hadron Collider, has a specific meaning. Large refers to its impressive size, hadron because it speeds up protons and ions, collectively known as hadrons, and collider because it brings these particles into high-speed collisions. The LHC has some really big goals. It aims to answer some of the most basic yet profound questions in the field of physics. One of its major achievements was the hunt for and discovery of the Higgs boson. This elusive particle is linked to the Higgs field, which is crucial in understanding why particles have mass. The discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012 was a monumental event, confirming a vital part of what scientists call the standard model of particle physics. But the LHC's ambitions don't stop there. It also seeks to shed light on the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy, which are thought to make up the vast majority of all mass and energy in the universe. Other objectives include investigating the concept of supersymmetry, which could revolutionize our understanding of the universe, and figuring out why there's more matter than antimatter, which is one of the great puzzles of modern science. Moreover, the LHC allows scientists to delve into the conditions that existed in the early moments of the universe. It does this by creating something known as a quark-gluon plasma. This unique state of matter is believed to have been present right after the Big Bang, Scientists achieve this by smashing heavy ions together at incredibly high energies, recreating the intense conditions of the universe's infancy. Through these groundbreaking experiments, the LHC not only provides answers to long-standing questions, but continually opens new frontiers in our understanding of the cosmos. And those new places are nearer than we thought. Half of the universe was a puzzle, something we couldn't understand. But that's different now. Let's start with what we know. The universe, including us, the planets, stars, and those beautiful swirling nebulae, is largely made up of something called baryonic matter. This is the stuff that you can see and touch. It's made of particles like protons and neutrons. But here's where it gets puzzling. Scientists believe that about 5% of the universe should be this baryonic matter. However, when they looked around, they could only account for about half of that. This mystery has been called the missing baryon problem. You might wonder why scientists were so sure about this 5% figure. Well, it's all about the balance of elements in the universe. The balance, especially the ratio of deuterium, a form of hydrogen to helium, can be explained if the universe has a specific amount of baryonic matter. The story begins shortly after the Big Bang, a time of intense heat and radiation. In this early chaotic universe, Protons and neutrons were flying everywhere. As the universe expanded, it started to cool down, allowing these protons and neutrons to join together. They formed various nuclei, but one important one was helium-4, consisting of two protons and two neutrons. But to get to helium-4, another step was needed, forming deuterium, which is just a proton and a neutron together. Deuterium is less stable, so it kept breaking apart until the universe cooled enough for it to stick around. Once it did, it quickly fused into helium. This rapid fusion depended on how dense the universe was at that time. Eventually, fusion stopped, leaving a universe with about 75% hydrogen and 25% helium, which is what we still see today. 
Interestingly, all the deuterium we have now, even in our tap water, was formed in those first 20 minutes after the Big Bang. When we look into space, we see the cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang. By studying this light and the amount of deuterium, scientists can estimate the amount of baryonic matter in the early universe, which leads us back to that 5% figure. In the late 1990s, astronomers took a kind of inventory of the universe. They counted all the stars, planets, black holes, galaxies, dust clouds, and gas. Basically, everything visible or detectable with telescopes. What they found was surprising. All these things added up to just about 20% of all expected baryonic matter. So, where was the rest? The answer lies in the parts of the universe that don't glow or reflect light. This isn't dark matter. It's just ordinary matter hiding in the dark. To find these hidden baryons, astronomers use quasars as a kind of cosmic backlight. Quasars are incredibly bright and far away emitting light from the intense activity around supermassive black holes in distant galaxies. By studying the light from quasars, astronomers found evidence of neutral hydrogen gas in space, which accounted for some of the missing baryons. But there was still more to find. Computer simulations suggested that the remaining baryons were scattered between galaxies in thin, hot filaments, known as the warm-hot intergalactic medium, or WIM. Detecting these particles was challenging because of their ionized state and temperature, making them emit or absorb light in hard-to-detect wavelengths. The breakthrough came with an understanding of a phenomenon much closer to home, lightning. Lightning produces electromagnetic radiation, including very low-frequency radio waves. These waves can travel vast distances, guided by Earth's magnetic field. When they're detected far away, they don't arrive as a single pulse, but spread out, creating a sound known as a whistler. This dispersion, where the waves are spread out due to the passing through electrons was key. Now imagine using a similar concept to detect the ionized baryons in space. That's what happened with the discovery of fast radio bursts, or FRBs, brief, intense flashes of radio waves from distant galaxies. By studying the dispersion of these bursts, scientists could estimate the number of ionized baryons they pass through. A recent study about fast radio bursts has given us new insights into the universe, especially about the mysterious normal matter that makes up everything we can see and touch. This study was like a giant team effort with scientists from many countries like the Netherlands, Chile, Japan, the UK, the USA, and Australia all working together. Before this study, trying to figure out how much stuff is in the universe was really tricky and often gave us different answers. This was a big puzzle for scientists because their models of how the universe works weren't matching up with what they were finding. A big part of this puzzle was that more than half of the matter that should be there, according to our understanding of the universe, seemed to be missing. Scientists thought that this missing matter was hiding in the space between galaxies. It was thought to be so hot and spread out that it was almost impossible to see with the usual methods. Now this is where FRBs come in. They are super short but incredibly bright bursts of radio waves from far away in space. What's cool about them is that they can see through space in a way that we can't. They can detect tiny particles like electrons, even in space that's almost completely empty. This helps scientists measure how much stuff is actually between galaxies. When they looked at this new data, they found that it matched with what the Big Bang Theory predicted. This is a theory about how the universe started with a big explosion and then expanded. According to this theory, only about 5% of the universe is made up of normal matter, like stars, planets, and galaxies. The study showed that this matter is spread out in different ways. Stars and galaxies make up about 7%, cold gas in galaxies about 1%, hot gas in galaxies about 5%, hot gas in clusters of galaxies is about 4%. Then there's gas between galaxies, which is a lot more. Cool intergalactic gas is around 28%, warm gas is 15%, and hot gas is the biggest part at 40%. Scientists also looked at the cosmic microwave background for clues. This is light left over from the Big Bang that spread all over the universe. Observations from a space observatory called Planck in 2015 showed that the amount of normal matter should be about 4.9% which matches the new findings. Even with all this new information, FRBs themselves are still pretty mysterious. 
we don't really know what causes these super bright, super short bursts. Some think that it might come from things like magnetars, which are like stars with really, really strong magnetic fields. But it gets more complicated because some FRBs repeat themselves. Like one of them was found to go off every 16 days. So scientists wonder how something can explode regularly like that. To understand FRBs better, astronomers have divided them into two groups, those that repeat and those that don't. They think that these bursts might be related to the end of a star's life, like supernovas or when stars turn into things like neutron stars, pulsars, magnetars, white dwarfs, or even black holes. Sometimes they think that it might be from two stars crashing into each other. By studying these FRBs, scientists hope to learn more about how stars change over their lifetimes, especially after big events like supernovas. But they're also open to the idea that FRBs could be something even more strange, like cosmic strings or a star crashing into a supermassive black hole. For this study, scientists used some really powerful telescopes. One important one is the ASCAP radio telescope in Western Australia. It's part of a bigger project involving 16 countries to build two huge radio telescopes. One will have over 130,000 antennas, and the other will have almost 200 big dishes. There's also the very large telescope in Chile. It has four big mirrors, each eight meters across. Australian scientists get to use this telescope and are also excited about a future one called the Extremely Large Telescope. This new telescope will have even better images, like 15 times sharper than the Hubble Space Telescope. All of this is just part of a bigger story about how we understand the universe. It shows us that the stuff we can see, like stars and planets, is just a tiny part of what's out there. Most of the matter in the universe is in forms that we're just starting to learn about. It's a reminder that there's still so much we don't know, and that every new discovery leads to more questions. So this study isn't just about finding missing matter. It's about using new tools like FRBs to see the universe in a different way. It helps us to check if our ideas about how the universe started and grew are right. And it's also about bringing scientists from all over the world together to solve these huge mysteries. It shows how science is always changing and growing, and how each new piece of the puzzle helps us understand the big picture a little better. So what cool things do you think we'll find with this new giant machine? Let me know in the comment section below. And smash that like button and subscribe for more.